everyone, this is Teacher Eve, and welcome to our very first lesson in 21st century literature from the Philippines and the world. The first quarter is focused on Philippine literature, while the second quarter will focus on literatures outside of the Philippines. Let me share with you the learning competency for this session. Identify the linguistic geographic, and ethnic dimensions of Philippine literary history from pre-colonial up to the contemporary. In line with this, your task is to make a timeline of important events in the literary history of the Philippines. If you notice, there are five important concepts that we need to understand first before we can move on to our main lesson. And these five words are Geographic, linguistic, ethnic, pre-colonial, and contemporary. To help us understand and differentiate these five words, we will play a game called Zoom In. In this activity, I will show five pictures, and all you have to do is to identify them. To make it more challenging, I will not show the entire picture but I will just zoom in on a particular part of the object. After identifying the picture, you need to connect it to any of the five words that I mentioned a while ago, then briefly explain why you think it is connected to that word. You may use the comment section to write your answers. You may also pause this video to do that and resume once you are done. Are you ready? Let's start with picture number one. What is this? Pause this video and write your answers. The first picture is an igorot. Is this word related to geographic, linguistic, ethnic, pre-colonial, or contemporary? You got it right. It is connected to ethnic. Ethnic means of or relating to large groups of people classed according to common racial, national, tribal, religious, linguistic, or cultural origin or background. Let's proceed to picture number two. What is this? You may pause here. That was very easy, right? Yes, it is a globe. Which of these words is globe related to? Geographic, linguistic, ethnic, pre-colonial, or contemporary? Good guess. It is related to geographic. Geographic means belonging to or characteristic of a particular region. Let us move on to picture number three. Please do not forget to pause and write your answer. And thank you for your active participation. The word is baybayin. Which of these five words is baybayin related to? Geographic, linguistic, ethnic, pre-colonial, or contemporary? If you answered linguistic, you are correct because linguistic means of or relating to language. If you also answered pre-colonial, you are also correct because pre-colonial means existing or occurring before an area undergoes colonization. Let us have the last picture. This one is very easy. Pause the video and interact with me. That's right, it's a cell phone or a gadget. Which of these five words is cell phone or gadget related to? Geographic, linguistic, ethnic, pre-colonial, or contemporary? Correct, it is related to contemporary. Contemporary mar it means 
marked by characteristics of the present period. Thank you very much for your active participation. As we go through the different periods in our literary history, you are to make a timeline of the important events on your notebook. Codina Ortega, in her article entitled The Literary Forms in Philippine Literature, mentioned the diversity and richness of Philippine literature evolved side by side with the country's history. Simply put, history affects literature, literature affects history. Later on, we will find out how true it is. If you remember your past lessons in history, even in some books that you have read in the past, you usually read that it was, it was Magellan who discovered the Philippines. Which is actually wrong. There were already several groups of people living in the islands when Ferdinand Magellan and his companions reached our shoreline. So we can assume that this statement was written from the colonizer's point of view, which was one of the propagandas used by the Spaniards to blot out the memory of country's largely oral past. They wanted to give us the idea that since they discovered the Philippines, hence our history started only during their colonization. It was only in the 1960s up to the 70s that nationalistic Filipinos started the clamor to create our own identity as Filipinos. Was this also how you were taught in earlier grades? Please comment below your insights or how you remembered you were taught this part of Philippine history. It would have been correct to say that on March 16, 1521, Ferdinand Magellan reached the Philippine Islands. It is important to note that most of what we know or most of what was written about the pre-colonial period were just reconstructions done by anthropologists and other scientists. During the Spanish invasion, they taught the natives that their writings, rituals, or others that belonged to their native culture were demonic. Hence, they destroyed most of whatever that could have proven their existence. Let us proceed to the pre-colonial period. Even before the colonizers reached the Philippines, our forefathers already had their own way of life. Most of these were passed down from one generation to another through oral traditions. Examples of oral traditions include folk speeches, folk songs, folk narratives, indigenous rituals, and mimetic dances. Folk speeches came in many forms. One of these was riddles. Different provinces had different names for riddles. Tigmo, Bugtong, Paktakon, and Patototong. Let us see if you can guess this one. Please comment your answer. Nagtago si Pedro, nakalabas ang ulo. The correct answer is nail or paco. Try this one. Do not forget to comment your answer. Hindi hari, hindi pari, nagdaramit ng sari-sari. If you answered sampayan or clothesline, you are correct. Can you give an example of a riddle that you have known since you were a child? Or if you have read a riddle in the comment section and you know the answer, please write your answer so you can interact with others too. Another form of folk speech is the tanaga. It is a poem with four lines, each line having four syllables. The last line in each the last syllable in each line rhymes with each other. Parang talang marikit, may taglay na pangakit, hangad niyang makamit, huwag sanang ipagkait. As you can see from this example, it has four lines. 
on each line there are seven syllables and the words on each line rhymes with each other. The third type of folk speech is called Salawi Ka'in. They, they are gems as they contain the experiences, wisdom, and truths that were passed on from generation to generation. Complete the Salawi Ka'in. Ang mabuting gawa, kinalulugdan ng blank. Please comment your answer. Ang mabuting gawa, kinaluluglan ng madla. Aside from folk speeches, songs of the early Filipinos were varied and depicted their way of life. They had lullaby, serenade or harana, drinking songs and other types for entertainment, songs specifically sung during the wake, or songs that they sing when they work. They also used songs to instill wisdom to their children. Do you know some of our folk songs? Please comment below. For folk narratives, we have epic, folk tales, fables, and legends. One common element of these is magic. They explain how certain things or places were formed why a certain animal behaved differently from others, or how a certain place originated. We do not have a national epic, just like in other countries. For during the pre-colonial times, the early people did not have a sense of oneness as a whole nation, but they considered their own community or region as a nation. That is the reason why we have several epics from different regions. Examples are Ibalon, Hudhud, and Kudaman. Aside from epics, we also had folk tales. They help us learn something about the magic, superstitions, and weird customs of the Filipinas, and to feel the charm of their wonder world. We can only imagine how these stories were made. Maybe a child asked a parent upon seeing a monkey, what is that animal and why does it look like that? The imaginative and creative parent, on the other hand, to answer the question, weaved a magical story to satisfy the curiosity of the child. Examples of these are the sun and the moon, how children became monkeys, the story of Bantugan, and the adventures of Juan. The third type of folk narrative is fables. These are stories with animals as characters. I'm sure you know some of them. What kind of folk narratives are you familiar with? Please comment below. When the Spaniards went to the Philippines and colonized the archipelago, they changed the Filipinas' way of life. They used literature to influence them. There were two classifications of literature during this period, the religious and the secular. Religious works included in early catechism were included in early catechism given by the Spanish priests. They used these writings to teach Spanish language to the natives. Of course, the topics were spiritual matters. On the other hand, the most notable of the secular lyrics followed the conventions of a romantic tradition. These include love stories with a loyal lover and a heartless rival. The leading poets were Jose Corazon de Jesus, also known as Jose Cicio, and Francisco Balagtas. Another popular secular poetry is the metrical romance, the Awit and Corido in Tagalog. These are colorful tales of chivalry, just like Ibong Adarna. There are numerous metrical romances in Tagalog, Ilonggo, Pampango, Ilocano, and in Pangasinan. 
written in languages like Tagalog, Hiligaynon, Bicolano, and Kapampangan. The most famous of the country's metrical romances is Florante at Laura. Secular works appeared alongside historical and economic changes. When the Filipinos who belonged to the middle class were able to afford studying in Europe, these Filipino elites could now read printed works which before were, o were only used by the missionaries. The literature that they read abroad and their exposure to the culture of other countries widened their perspectives and opened their eyes to the sad state of their homeland. The literature during the Spanish regime played important role in instilling nationalistic consciousness to the masses. Illustrados like Jose Rizal, Graciano Lopez Jaina, Marcelo H. de Avalar, and others changed our history through their political essays, novels, and other works. They used literature to ask for reforms. The very same forms of literature opened the eyes of the Filipinos in the Philippines who were not as fortunate as the Ilustrados. These writings influenced people like Andres Bonifacio, who founded KKK and started the revolution. Events at that time influenced our literature. In turn, literature changed our history forever. From your history classes in the past, you are very much aware of how Noli Metangere and El Filibusterismo were very, very powerful and influential in ushering the Filipinos to a new period in our history. Let us move on to the colon American colonial period. This is the picture of the University of the Philippines. Now, as we talk about the American colonial period, the University of the Philippines is one of the things that comes to mind. This university was built in 1908 by the Americans. If during the previous colonizers, only the chosen elite were able to study, one of the good changes that the colonizers brought was free education for all. The two main characteristics of the American period were free public education for all and the use of English as a medium of instruction. The first teachers were soldiers called the Thomasites, and according to Isabel Martin, soldiers were already teaching in Corridor even before they officially occupied Manila. Also, according to her, in her article American Education and Philippine Literature, education was really a part of the military strategy employed by the Americans to colonize us. And since education was part of the strategy, they said English as the medium of instruction and the native language was only used outside of formal schooling. For 40 years, the Filipinos were exposed to American canons of literature. According to them, English would civilize the natives. This was the same mindset used by the Spaniards. However, the Filipinos already had a rich collection of literature when the Americans brought liberal education to the Philippines. During the first 10 years, the works produced by Filipinos were mostly rejections or condemnations of religious control. It is understandable given that the, their memories of abuses from the previous colonizers were still fresh. Since Spanish was very much associated to the bad experiences that they had, the use of that language declined. However, English was not yet very much popular at that time. Given this language environment, it opened the door for the literature in the vernacular for the native language to thrive. Filipino writers found themselves free to express Thus, Philippine poetry, fiction, and essays flourished. But it is also important to note that literature in the vernacular 
is an out of school stuff. Why? Because English, naturally English was the medium of instruction and literature that were writ not written in English were considered as inferior, weak, bad, immature or adolescents, or simply romantic. What led to this mindset? The classrooms during that time were filled with literature in English and these were taught as canon. Canon means standard or they were considered as the best forms of writing. If English literature were considered as the best, then those that do not follow the standard were substandard or weak. It is important to note that the literature that the Americans It is important to note that the literature that were chosen and taught as canons in the classrooms here in the Philippines during their time were not even were not even considered as good literature in America. If that is the case we will wonder why were they taught in the Philippines and why were they taught as canons? They were promoted here for a reason. If the Spaniards used religion, the Americans used another to colonize us, and that is education. These novels have themes that promote good behavior in a colonized country. For example, in the Song of Hiawatha, the main character sees the colonizers as messengers of God. In the end, Hiawatha accepted his faith, left home, and entrusted to his English, to the English, his fellow Native Americans. Evangeline is a love story of a couple who were separated by their English colonizers. But the story focused on the romantic and the sentimental sides rather than on the sufferings of the lovers and their hate toward the people who caused their separation. And lastly, the Alhambra. You might be surprised in the beginning why this was included since this showed how cruel the colonizers were. But it is interesting to note that the colonizers were the same Spaniards who terrorized and controlled the Filipinos. It is now easy to understand why they were used in the Philippines. What do you think were the effects of these kinds of literature? If they were considered as the standards of exemplary literature, then the writings of the Filipinos at first were mostly copies of their readings in the classroom. The themes, the plot, and the vocabulary followed what were considered as canons. And those that do not follow these prescriptions were considered as low class. Many English educators and Filipino writers observed that what Filipinos produced at that time were just imitations. There was a call for original Filipino writings. The issue then was copying the canon versus originality. Those were the that was the dilemma of the writers at that time. To make their writings original, they used local color. Local color means to infuse something that is only found in the Philippines through the use of setting, language, and culture that is unique to Filipinos. They now use rice fields, mountains, and countryside as their setting. They even include Filipino words, dialogues, and names in their novels. They also highlighted traditions and culture unique to us like Pamamanhikan and Panliligaw. These magazines were produced weekly and contained novels similar to our telenovelas nowadays. They were in the vernacular like the Tagalog, Iloko, Hiligaynon, and Cebuanon. 
common themes were mostly romantic and sentimental. There is an observable division among those who write in English and those who write in Filipino and the vernacular. They both developed and thrived, but an, but an author noted that apparently what was lacking during the period was for the writers in the various languages to come together, share experiences, and come to a conclusion on the elements that constitute good writing in the Philippines. To summarize this period, let me borrow the words of the writer Isabel Martin. The Filipino experience of American colonial education must constantly remind us that education is never neutral. Education is power, the power to forge realities, the power to propel cultures, the power to interrupt life. In the next section, the development of Philippine literature was once again interrupted because of the change in the social times. Another set of colonizers were to put an indelible imprint not just on the country's history, but also on its literary development. During the Japanese colonial period, all forms of writing in English were almost stopped, except for the Tribune and the Philippine Review. These were the only English newspaper publications that continued. Since almost everyone was concerned with survival during the war period, reading and writing was ne were neglected and became a luxury. People were more concerned with other essential needs and for their safety. For those who had the luxury to write, they wrote short stories, plays, and poems, and the topic was usually about rural life. Writings in Spanish and other languages that were in the National Library were lost during the Battle for Manila in 1945. And since English was strictly prohibited, this became the dark period for Philippine literature in English. The conditions in the Philippines during the Japanese invasion created a unique environment for the new Tagalog writing. Tagalog became the national language and the Japanese were strict on the use of language. This became advantageous to the Filipino language. Because of these, writers in English shifted to Tagalog and Filipino, write, Filipino writers in English had no readership. All publications, all publications were under the supervision of the Japanese military. Hence, writings were limited unlike the former times of the Americans. Haiku was one of the types of poems that emerged during this time. It had three lines and 17 syllables. Can you make your own haiku about the current pandemic? Write your answers in the comments section below. I'll be waiting for your answers. Another form is the tanaga. It is more rhyming. It's, it has seven syllables per line and it has four lines. Our history affects lit, its influence stands to it. Language and forms changed to fit. Writers were hit, but didn't quit. Can you challenge yourself to write a tanaga? Go ahead and write your answers. Filipino drama during the Japanese period. During the Japanese period, the Philippine drama experienced a setback. Movie houses showing American films were closed. Most plays were just translations from English to Tagalog. Few of the playwrights were Jose Maria Hernandez, Francisco Soc Rodrigo, Clodoaldo del Mundo, Juan Cruz Balmaceda. 
The field of the short story widened during the Japanese occupation. Many wrote short stories. Liwaiwai Arsei was a writer of fiction, essays, journalists, journalistic pieces, dramas, and biographies. Her short story, Uhaw, Ang Tigang na Lupa, was hailed as pangalawang pinakamabuting akdain, akdang Pilipino in 1943. Other works were Lungsod, Nayon at Dagat Dagatan. Noteworthy writer of the period was Carlos P. Romulo, who won the Pulitzer Prize for his bestseller, I Saw the, Fili the Fall of the Philippines, I See the Philippines Rise, and His Mother America and My Brother Americans. Writings in Spanish and other languages that were in the National Library were lost during the Battle for Manila, as I've mentioned a while ago. Even those who were not writers by profession, like comfort women or children of war and veterans, felt the need to capsulate the experience through literature. So most of the most of the writings at that time were memoirs or biographies and anthologies. After the war, literature regained new momentum. A lot of novels were written and mostly had realistic themes, sufferings during the war, reforms, and activism. Writings in Spanish and other languages that were in the National Library were lost during the Battle for Manila in 1945. So even those who were not writers by profession like comfort women and children of war veter veterans felt the need to capsulate their experiences through literature. The transitional period in the Philippine literature from the American style to the modern style of Filipinos. During this time, Filipinos learned how to express themselves more confidently. And notable writers were Macari Pineda, Stevan Avellana, and NVM Gonzalez. However, another event in our Philippine history affected our literature, and one cannot deny that literature left also its mark in this part of history. During martial law, literature had common themes because the government took and controlled all privately owned newspapers, magazines, radio, television facilities, and other media, and all other media communications. Also, during the time of Marcos, if they found out that you were writing or going against them, you would eventually be captured and tortured to ask who you were working for. During that time, most of the themes of literature were similar. What can you expect? If the writers and the publications were controlled and threatened, they only had few options left. Stop writing, follow the orders, rebel, and be ready to die. The following works were banned during the time of the dictator. The first was the work of Primitivo Mijares. He wrote The Conjugal Relationship. And months after this book was published in the United States, he and his teenage son were no longer seen. And when the body of the boy was found, all his nails were removed. And according to Inquirer.net, the body also had 33 ice pick wounds around his body. Even the song Bayan Ko, popularized by Freddy Aguilar, was also banned. Just Dado Makapagal, in his review of the conjugal dictatorship, mentioned to the Filipino people who dramatized in the Battle of Mactan of April 27, 1521, the rejection of a foreign tyranny sought to be imposed by Ferdinand Magellan, that they may soon recover lost courage and with greater vigor and determination, rid the Philippines of the evil rule of a homegrown tyrant with the same initials. 
Our history is carved with names of Filipinos who fought with dictator and colonizers. Literature caused the lives of some people in the hope to expose the corruption and abuses of those who were reigning at that time. Just like the experiences of many martyred Filipinos in the past, they dreamed of changing the circumstances, and their names will be forever part of our history. Two thousand one up to the present ushered us in. Two thousand one up to the present ushered us to out of the box themes and structures in Philippine literature. This reflects technological culture, which were brought about by the changing times. The World Wide Web surely has its own advantages and disadvantages to literature. This we will further explore in the next lessons. The genres include creative nonfiction, hyperpoetry, mobile phone text to la, chick lit, speculative fiction, flash fiction, blog, and graphic novels. The way people react, respond to, and interact with other people affect literature. As we have been discussing since the start of this lesson, changing times changes literature. Changing literature changes times. In other words, history affects literature and literature affects history. May we be empowered with this realization that our ideas, hopes, aspirations, when put to writing, can affect not only the present times but also the future. You have a voice. Use it to usher the kind of changes that you want to happen in this country. May this lesson also serve as a warning for all of you that as what happened in our history, not only foreign people but even fellow Filipinos will try to suppress your voice and dictate what you should say, what you should think, and what you should do. Take courage. You have the same blood as Andres Bonifacio, Jose Rizal, and others, and other heroes running in your veins. Speak and be heard. You have the same blood as Andres Bonifacio, Jose Rizal, and other heroes running in your veins. Speak and be heard. Thank you very much for watching.